Welcome back to part three of the Kohler Steam Generator Float Switch Repair. In part three, we're going to thoroughly test the float switch and the thermal sensing switch. So let's get started. With the float switch and the temperature sensing switch in place, I tested continuity through both switches. At room temperature, both switches maintain continuity. Now it's time to test them at higher temperatures. I carefully removed the float switch and the temperature sensing switch from the unit. I brought a pan of water up to boiling temperature and dropped in the switch. After a few minutes, I carefully removed the switch from the boiling water and did a continuity test. The switch maintained continuity through the 212 degree level. The temperature sensor was designed to maintain continuity up into 150 degrees Celsius. So we moved on to part four of the test. Knowing that 150 degrees Celsius is about 304 degrees Fahrenheit, we started up our toaster oven and placed the sensor inside. When the temperature sensor reached about 300 degrees, we took it out carefully and did another test. Again, the sensor maintained continuity. This thermal switch is a manual reset switch. Once continuity is broken, it has to be manually reset. On the back of the switch, there's a small button that when pushed will reactivate the switch. The temperature sensing switch seemed to be working properly, so we moved on to the float switch. The float switch is also a temperature sensitive switch. It needs to function well up above 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So we put it through the same testing process, and it maintained continuity up through 300 degrees as well. Not finding our problem there, we decided to move on to test the purging solenoid to see if there was continuity there. We did a simple continuity test on the purging solenoid and found that there was continuity there. So we moved on to do some testing on the float that allows water into the unit. We forced air through the intake pipe and found that it passed through the orifice for input into the tank quite easily in the down position. We then raised the float and found that it cut off the air supply, telling us that that float is functioning properly. On the slight chance that the temperature sensing unit and the float sensing unit were still not functioning, we decided to track down and order both of those parts. Those parts are not available from Kohler, so we needed to search them out and find them from various suppliers. Not only were we able to find a replacement for the float switch, we were also able to find a replacement for the temperature sensing switch and the purge solenoid. How all these pieces fit together will be the subject of part four of this video series. While we don't believe this to be the problem, we did take note of this relay inside the unit. This relay, when activated, allows current to flow into the heating element. Once activated, this relay is controlled by the temperature sending unit and the float switch. As long as the float switch maintains continuity and the temperature sensing unit is below 150 degrees Celsius, the heating element continues to function. When the water reaches steam level temperature, it's forced out of the tank. Water is then resupplied by the float valve and the process continues until it is stopped either by the timer or the temperature sensing unit inside the steam shower. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for part four of this series.